Hi, my name is Alice Cohen. I'm tucked away into the last remaining corner of my house since everyone is working in different spaces. I'm the lead teacher for social emotional learning for CPS and I'm also a social worker and I'm also a Cambridge parent. I have two kids, 11 and 16 in CPS. I was hoping to make some small videos that might be helpful to us during this time to answer some questions that I'm hearing from people across the district. And these videos are just my thoughts and opinions and um, unsolicited advice. So do with it what you will. And the question that we're going to answer today is why is everything so hard? So everything is super hard right now because of our brains. Our brains are totally under siege by conditions that we are really, really being thrown by. Here's how we can understand that better. The, the threat of the pandemic has activated the, the limbic part of our brain, the part of our brain in the middle, and given it a sense of impending doom in a very primitive response to threat. And this is clearly a major threat. So once that limbic system is activated, it stays pretty um, it stays pretty anxious. Sometimes you might wake up and find that you you're anxious the minute you open your eyes, or sometimes you may find that your frustration tolerance is much lower, or your um, feeling of well-being is challenged right now, and it is your feeling of well-being is significantly challenged. The other challenge we face is a challenge that I would call the challenge of disenfranchised grief. And that is when many, many death, much death is occurring, many, many people are dying, we don't know them, we feel a sense of loss and grief, but it's separate from us. Of course, during these times, that grief is moving closer, but this feeling of disenfranchised grief that we've had for the last few weeks is very difficult for the brain to process. Um, also, we are used to um, grieving discrete deaths. A person dies, we have a service, we grieve them, we have rituals. Now we are actually being asked to grieve multiple deaths that are um, global. And I'm not sure our brains have the capacity to really handle that. So between the limbic system and the feeling of um, grief and loss for things that we've known, which is very distracting, and this sense of loss around us that is ever approaching just distracts the brain, you guys. It just fries your brain. This is why you might find that you get halfway done with things and you walk away for some reason and you come back later and the half the dishes are done or the clothes are clean in the washer and the dryer's open but nothing made it there. And it's because when the brain is this distracted emotionally and full of the the chemicals of st strong anxiety, cortisol and adrenaline, it impacts our executive functioning, the stuff that happens right here in our brain, which is planning, sequencing, it impacts it deeply. So the reason things are so hard right now is because your brain is struggling, struggling, struggling to make sense of what's happening and create some kind of a sense of narrative about it, which we really can't because it's unfolding around us. So what do we need? Well, we need connection, man. We need to not get isolated. The other thing about this electronic, <laughs> this electronic world is it, it estranges us from one another in some ways. Even though we're here, we're still pretty distant. That feeling of estrangement and loneliness only adds to the stress that we're feeling. So we must do more right now to counteract what's happening in our brains. We need more. What do we need? We need mindfulness. We need to slow down and breathe. Some people have mistaken a great deal of frenetic activity for enough production to make everything go away. And spinning one's wheels and getting a whole lot done is a coping mechanism, but I'm not sure it's sustainable in the long term. What we need to 
make it in the long term is to make sure we treat the impact of social isolation both within our homes and in our communities in any way that we can because all of these feelings of dread and anxiety and worry and fear they require interpersonal connectedness of a high order in order to be soothed and wow we need self-compassion right now particularly if we're parents we can't do everything the way we used to do it before because nothing is the same as it was before we have to let go sometimes we have to settle sometimes i myself am learning to ignore various piles of dishes that appear around my house and are apparently invisible to other people with whom i live I used to text people, dishes, dishes in the living room. Now, maybe I only do that once a day. The magical dish piles continue to materialize. We need to self-soothe regularly. This won't be about keeping one's well-being. It'll be about losing it and then regaining it. And the loss and regaining it will keep us resilient and strong. So it's okay when we lose it, feel super anxious, get super angry, something very small happens, we have a big reaction, that's okay. We're modeling for our young people how to cope. We can't just cope by denying that this is rough, but we can demonstrate that we can cope by regrouping when we can't cope. And in that way, we teach kids how it's done. So that's why everything is so hard. And I urge you to try to, to play as much as you can, to try to laugh, try to watch funny stuff and stay in connection with one another. Do things that make your body feel good and, and, and whole. And things feel hard because they are. I hope this helped. I will continue to answer questions as time goes by. And I appreciate this opportunity to come into your space wherever you are and say, be well. Thanks.